All right, what's up, YouTube? And, yeah, it's probably just YouTube. And whoever, Instagram, TV, all of the above. What's up? Today, we're gonna walk through a commonly asked question uh, that people give us all the time. People are like, hey, what gear do you use? All of those things. So I'm gonna show you what gear we use in full. So you get to see it all. You get to know why we use certain things and what we use them for and how much they cost, all those things. We will have an exhaustive list of all of these things in the notes. Thanks to Bobby. Thanks, Bobby. Uh, you're welcome. Awesome. You the man. Right now we're gonna start with bags. Bags are really important because there's a lot of different bags out there. There's a lot of things that people are like, oh man, I need I need to carry a lot of stuff or I need to carry a little bit of things and I don't need a bag that's too big. I don't need a bag that's too small. I need a bag that's just right. And we've been through a bunch of different ones. Like I've been through bags that, um, like golf bags, literally. Like if you have a lot of light stands or if you have any kind of stands for, like we had big, big metal C stands for huge softbox. If you're doing that, what I really recommend is you find like a golf bag. Like literally what golfers use when they travel is they put their golf bag inside of a golf bag. And it's like a travel bag for their light stands and all those things. So go check out those. I'll put those in the, uh, in the comments down below so you can take a look at those as well. You'll also see here the bags that we take to every wedding. Now, we have different bags for different things. So when we travel, like this next trip we're going, overseas to travel for weddings, we're gonna take this. This is the Think Tank Airport, <laughs> Airport? The Think Tank Airport version 2.0 bag. Uh, and this is a really great, uh, actually the Airport International version 2.0 bag. And this is a really great bag, uh, especially if you don't have a whole lot of gear. So it's really nice. We've got it organized for specifically when we travel. So we've got a larger bag. This is the Think Tank, uh, which one is this? This is the Think Tank Production Manager 40. So this is like what we carry to every wedding that's here on the States or when we drive. But if we have to fly, then what we do is we carry this. And this is already organized for us. It's a little bit dirty, it's a little messy, that's okay. But this is already organized for us, how we would carry uh, weddings when we go overseas or have to fly to weddings. And so this is just a really nice way. It still carries like three camera bodies, uh, I don't know, a couple flashes, all of our lenses, which is five lenses, carries all of those in here. So this still does a great job, but when we're here in the, uh, and we don't have to, and we're just driving, we carry a lot more to weddings because we can. So I highly, highly, highly recommend the Think Tank uh, Airport International bag. One, because <clears throat> it's got this sweet uh, retractable thing uh, that allows you to, to carry it like right behind you. What I also really like about it, I haven't used this function as much as I would like to, but I do like the fact that it allows me to uh, to anchor it down to something. So like, let's say we have like $25,000, $30,000 worth of gear in here. You wanna be able to anchor that down to something so nobody steals it. Uh, this allows you to set your own combination and put it on a table, desk, maybe even a pole or something like that. So that's really nice. Oh, so like, here's, here's one thing um, that I do like about it is like, we'll go, so when we travel internationally, and we're going out to dinner or something or we're leaving our gear back at home, I'll actually anchor this down to the bed. So like, or anchor this down to like something that's attached to the wall. So if somebody does break into our room and tries to steal our stuff, they can't get this. Um, I also, I do also like that it has more of like a primary, primary lock for like everyday use. So what I do is bring it in here, bring it back down here, and I can actually snap those right in and then mix up the combination. So then all I have to do is put that in the combination again let me, let me try to look at my combo. Put that combination in, pops right out. So really great, they thought well, they thought of this, uh, they thought through this really, really well. It's really well made, it's sturdy. We've had this one for a couple years. It even comes with one of those sleeves. Mine is like, it's not in here right now, it's somewhere over there. But it comes with this, here it is. It comes with a sleeve, so in case it's raining, you can take it and you can actually wrap it right up. So makes it, now, for the most part, I believe it is like water resistant. I don't know how waterproof it is, but if you need to wrap it up, uh, you clearly have never done it before, but there's some way that you can do it. So, uh, really great, I highly recommend it. It's the, the Airport International version 2.0. Great, great, great uh, bag for not, as, not a whole lot of gear. Now, let's get to this bad boy. 
This is the uh, production manager, and they say that for good reasons. Uh, this production manager holds all of our gear. That includes like uh, monopods, tripods, all of our modifiers, uh, all of our lenses, all of our uh, lighting equipment, uh, lens, the cameras, all kinds of stuff. So let me show you what I use each of these little sections for. All right, so I'm gonna kind of walk through all of these, like what I have in here. So I'm just gonna show you because I know when I first started and I got this thing, I was like, how the heck am I going to organize this thing? It's like so much and it's fairly daunting to think about. So I'll just show you guys like how I have things organized and it looks just like this. Um, but I'm gonna go through individually. <coughs> have you seen uh, Zoolander? <coughs> Pop, I think I got the black lung. <laughs> Um, all right, anyways, so I don't know where I was just now, but I'm gonna show you guys individually in a couple minutes, or, or individually in the next in the next little frame area thingy. I'm gonna show you like what I have in here, because it's a lot of gear, but this is kind of how I have it laid out. It's like lens, 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 camera, 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 lens, 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 flash, 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 flash gear, uh, all kinds of stuff. I have extra pieces uh, for the tripod, for our money makers, which we'll talk about in a second, our bungee cords, which we'll talk about for a second in a second as well. And there's all kinds of stuff. So in the back is a lot of our modifiers, uh, even like a monopod for certain things. And who else knows what the heck is back there? So there's a couple other things back there as well. So really nice, I like this layout. It's been really helpful for us. This is a layout that we've had since the beginning after tweaking it a little bit, and it's worked really, really well for us. Now, let's go ahead and we're gonna talk about one more bag that I really like. Actually, I'll talk about that bag later. Let me go ahead and we'll get uh, and we'll dive into all of the gear. We're gonna start at camera bodies. How about that? That's a good one. So we are using right now to record this a Nikon D750, which is what we use. We use D750s, but I want to get an 850. But we use D750s for right now. Uh, we have one here. We have one that we're using there, and then one here. So I generally carry two. Uh, one with an 85 and a 35 on. Catherine has one with a 50 generally. And I like the grip on it uh, because it allows me to shoot from both, both ankles. Uh, I cannot shoot from both ankles. It allows me to shoot from both angles. Um, so you can see here's one. Uh, I can shoot from here or I can shoot from here. So I really enjoy that. I also love the D750 because it has a flip out screen. So a lot of times I'll shoot from above like this or I'll shoot from down below like this. Um, also, my cat, the cat, this is actually, this might actually be a picture of my cat. I'm not 100% sure. A client gave us this shirt, but this is the shirt. Um, but I can also shoot from down low, down there like that. And so I love the D750 and its flip out screen. I also really, really, really love the dynamic range that we get from the D750. We actually were interviewed on a podcast uh, from the Focus podcast run by Cinnamon Wolf and her husband. So if you wanna check that out, we'll put that in the link below. We'll also put that on our podcast as well. And so it'll probably be on there. But it just goes through why we switched from Nikon to Canon and why we really love Canon, and it's, or why we really love Nikon. And you'll see like a really long, or not see, but you can hear exactly why we really love it. Let's switch over to lenses. So we have the Sigma 85 1.4, I think this is. Yeah, so I have, uh, I've gone from all different types of lenses. I use 85 lenses. I use the, the Canon 1.2. Like I think the Canon is the granddaddy of them all, that, anchor, that, um, that 85, because it's a really, really nice, buttery. It's probably one of the best ones out there. But it's, I also call it the granddaddy of them all because it's super slow. It's like my granddaddy tried to run sprints. Like it's a very, very slow lens. Uh, and so, didn't really like that one a lot. I've used uh, the Nikon 85, much smaller than the Sigma 85, which like, this looks like a 7200. Like you can literally beat somebody over the head with this thing. Don't do that, I don't condone that at all. But it's such a big, heavy lens, but man, is it nice and sharp and crisp. And it's 1.4 and it's at a fraction of the cost of the Nikon and Canon lens. Gosh, the Canon lens is like $2,300. I think this was like 900. I may be wrong. Uh, make sure that you check below and see what exactly what it is but it's much it's at a fraction of the cost of the other 85s super comparable uh, so I highly suggest it also use the Tamron 35 what Tamron yes Tamron I know like when we first started Tamron was like the, the, the snickle fritz of, of, of lenses like we were like oh, I'm not using a Tamron <laughs> look at that guy he uses a Tamron he must not be a professional photographer but 
we use Tamron lenses and I think they've actually stepped their game up since Sigma has stepped their game up and they're really giving Nikon and Canon a run for their money. I mean like, they are crushing it right now. The Tamron 35, I think, uh, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure is the only prime lens that has image stabilization in it. And so it's really, really nice. This also gets you the closest to a macro lens without actually being a macro lens, which is what I love about this 35. And so like, we don't, you'll notice, we don't own a macro lens because I don't need a macro lens. I'm not gonna buy a lens for one ring shot. You know what I'm saying? So I got the 35 here I've used Nikon 35, Canon 35, Sigma 35, and Tamron 35. I love this Tamron 35. And it, again, is at a fraction of the cost. Super nice, great lens. Uh, the one thing I do have wrong with it is like, I don't know what's going on there, but I think the, the, uh, the, the weather seal is like coming off. So I have to send that back into them. Probably not the best uh, endorsement, but it's honest. Um, so I do love this Tamron lens. It's a really great lens. I do suggest it. So it's much cheaper and it, it really keeps up and compares. Now onto the 50s. I don't use the 50 often just because I use um, the 85 and the 35 for 80% of the day. Um, but we have the Nikon and because of that, we just have the Nikon Nikkor 51.4G uh, because it's cheap. I think it's like $300 uh, compared to the Canon $1,200 uh, L lens and like literally cannot tell a difference. I mean like what the heck are you doing at 1.2 anyways? Like seriously uh, And so like but I used to shoot at 1.2, but now like I just don't because it doesn't make that much sense 1.4 and 1.2 is not a huge huge difference. And so I do love this lens. It's cheap It works really really well uh, and that's about what I need from it, from a 50. Also, I have the 24 millimeter 1.4 that is actually I'm using right now. Great lens. Uh, I wish it was a tad bit faster. It's the Nikon, uh, Nikkor, I think, 24 1.4 G. Uh, great lens. Uh, I do wish it was a tad bit faster, but it's still pretty good. A uh, great lens for what it is, and it does it gets the job done. Like that's all I really care about. It gets the job done. I don't want to get anything too crazy. Sigma. Let me tell you guys. I've had the Sigma 50, Sigma 85, Sigma 35, Sigma 24, and for some reason I just haven't had the best luck with Sigma lenses. Like the 50, I picked it up one day and it just, the focus ring didn't turn. I literally, I don't even use the 50. It sat in my bag for a while. I picked it up, focus ring didn't turn. Oh, my 35 and my 24 Sigma lenses are stuck at 1.4. Like it doesn't matter what I do with the settings in the camera, stuck at 1.4. The aperture eyes is stuck wide open. Uh, and it doesn't matter what settings I have it at. and um, and I just think they have focus issues. Like I hate that I have to recalibrate my lenses. Like, no, I bought the lens, do its freaking job. You know what I'm saying? Okay, anyways, I digress. So Sigma lenses are great lenses. If you have good luck with them, that's awesome. I historically have not. So I've just gone away from using Sigma lenses, except the 85. Maybe it hadn't let me down yet. Um, now for flashes, I don't need anything crazy. I've used crazy. I used to have uh, Canon 600 EXRTs, which are like $600 a piece and I had five of them. So we've had all of those. You know what I use now? Yong Yuo, right? I think these things are like $100 off Amazon and they work really well, like literally, like I'm gonna turn this one on. I'm gonna turn on the receiver that I have. Uh, Look, I'm gonna turn on a couple of them. This is the cheaper version. So this is the ETTL version that we use just in case you wanna pop up and it gets like, you know, the ETTL evaluative through the lens. And so like, it's gonna, it's gonna read the distance, get the distance on that person and, let, and compared to your setting, it's gonna let you know how much flash power you need. What the great thing is I can use this as a slave. So turning it on, this one is on slave and then I can use this one. So this is the YN685. Um, and then I can also use, I use the YN 560, which these are like 70 bucks, right? Now watch this. I have both of these on, um, I have both of these on slave and let's test them out. Hold on, let me actually put them on a camera. Uh, so I attached the trigger uh, and I'm gonna show you, these things cycle really quickly and work really well for being $100, $75 flashes. Watch this. Those things are just going, right? Like, and I'm not missing. So really, really awesome. And I use these batteries at a recent wedding. So like these is, those things are just going. So great flashes for the price. We love using them. They're really easy. They work well together. And like for the price of one 600 EXRT, I could buy three to four of these flashes. And so like, it's just a no brainer for us because like, I would rather these pieces of junk break 
and then me spend another $125 to get a new one rather than a 600 EXRT built a little bit better, but it breaks and I have to spend $600 to get another one. So these are no brainers for us. If it breaks, we just buy a new one really quickly. They work really well um, they do the job and I enjoy them. All right, so now on to modifiers. We wanted to say, we don't use like a lot of off camera flash. We do kind of, but we don't use a whole lot of it. And so one of our biggest things with modifiers was staying really simple and really easy. So we went ahead and just went with the MagMod system just because the MagMod system is so easy. Like it just works. So um, they have these adapters that go onto the flashes like so, and then like, well, that didn't work. Like that, I can just pop these things right on. And then I've got really nice diffused light, which is really great. So. It allows me to diffuse light throughout the whole entire room, but then it also kind of like, just makes it easy to just pop on, pop off. And if I want to put another kind of modifier, I can. So if I want to add like a, a gel, I super easy for me to add gels. Got this little gel pack. And then from in there, all I do is put the gel right into here and snap it right on. So super easy. No longer do I have to like wrap a gel, Velcro it, anything like that pops right on. And then if I want to add that with a modifier, I can add that with a modifier. And even more, we use grids as well. So if I want to add that with a grid, I can just do that by itself or add that with a grid and a modifier. So these make it really, really easy to be able to do multiple things uh, and control light a lot better. So the MagMod is a really, really great um, source. I also use these mag bounces. So these are really great if you don't have a ceiling. So let's say you're shooting a reception, there's no ceiling uh, to bounce off a flash. If you do bounce flash, so we do a mixture of bounce and off camera. Uh, and I'll talk to you a little about that in a minute. But if you want to, you can just bounce it right off of here and then it goes right in there instead of not having a ceiling to be able to bounce anything off. So the mag bounce is really cool. And if you want to use the snoot, the snoot really directs the light. So a grid will direct the light. Um, it actually puts like a 30 degree or a 40 degree angle on and so it deflects the light and really focuses it So the more you grids you have the more focused the beam is or you could go the route of the snoot And you can see obviously what it does to that light It takes the light and it really tunnels it down So like let's say you want to just shoot somebody's just face and not the whole body the snoot would be really really great So that's the mag snoot. They just came out with uh, the mag box, which is really, really cool. So it's essentially all these things working in a soft box form, which is going to be really, really cool. They just unleashed that or unleashed it, unleashed the beast. They just put that out. Um, but I think it's just in a Kickstarter phase right now. So make sure you guys jump on that. So I did talk a little bit about our uh, off camera flash. What I love to do is to be able to control the light. I make sure that I, I, um, I shoot with, we shoot at receptions, off camera flash at the receptions. But then uh, I like to, so sometimes just depending on the space, I'll either hold the flash like this um, with one of these thingies. I'll put the show notes exactly what it is because I don't know what it's called. So you can hold the flash like this and generally I'll go something like this, boom. Or what I really enjoy doing, just depending on how, how many uh, push-ups I've done that day. Uh, give me a second. Clearly not a lot because I can't get this thing off. Uh, there it goes. So what I also do is to be able to really control that light and get the look that I want, uh, I will put it on here. And then uh, I'll put exactly what this is. And I'll kind of shoot like this. And I'll be able to control the light because like, I'll shoot the subject over here and be able to light him from the side. And this light is getting right on him. So it's a really, really cool thing. Oh, shoot. Yeah, you just gotta make sure it's attached because you don't want to fall it on people. But it's a great arm workout. Let me tell you, the junk gets heavy. So sometimes it ain't for everybody and that's okay. But um, it's a really, really great uh, tool. Uh, make sure they're strapped in well. Ah, okay, now um, going in, this is super important, battery packs. That's what we're gonna talk about, battery pack. This is called, so this is like an alternative. They have like really, really expensive battery packs that you guys can use. We use the alternative. It's called the ProPack PB960. Yeah. Um, we use this thing and it's really, really cool because what it does is you hook this up to your flash and you can hook this up to most flash systems, but you want to hook it right in there. And what then it does is it allows you to take flash power or take power away from the batteries for, for the batteries having to work so hard to being able to use this. So what that does is that makes your recycle time like that much faster. So let's go. Um, you guys remember how fast it was before. I'm going to push this on like super fast mode and you guys are going to watch this. So look, let's see. 
and they keep going. And then it keep going as fast as my shutter will click. Oh, the magma picked up a battery. <laughs> so it go as fast as my shutter will click for as many times as I want, which is really awesome. So these are like, look, these are these $100 Young Yuos with this. I don't know how much this battery pack cost us, but it's awesome because that's off of one charge. So I literally, we just shot a whole wedding reception with this and it's not even down one battery. Um, one battery part, which is cool. So you can shoot multiple weddings on this. Now we like to charge them up before every wedding, but they're really, really amazing because it allows me to, like I just like doing this, check this out. Oh, it's like a rave in here. What's going on? So that was weird. All right, anyways. So these battery packs are amazing because they extend the life of your battery and they allow you to get that really, really fast recycle time, which just blows it out of the water. So helpful, so necessary. So make sure you guys get these things. Man, let me tell you, these companies, they need to send me some money for this because these things work um, and I really suggest them. Now, when it comes to rechargeable batteries, I suggest Power X. You could go with Enelope. Enelope is really, really popular in our industry, but what I like about these is this has 2,500 mAh, whatever that is. That's a little bit higher than Enelope, and so I think these don't have as long a shelf life, so you will have, to, like, you can't just leave these, you, could, you can't just charge these and leave these for, like, a year, you'll have to charge them again. But when you do charge them, they have a lot more juice in them than the Enelopes, which is why I like the Maha Power X's or the Power X's, they might not be my Maha. Maha is the bay that I use. Uh, hey Bobby, can you go grab that bay in there? This is Power X by Maha. This is the charger for it. What I love about this charger is it charges the batteries individually. So sometimes you'll get char rechargeable batteries and it charges them all as a bunch. And so like some batteries may be fuller than others. It don't matter, it don't discriminate. It says, hey, I wanna charge all of these to full regardless. And some of that can be hurtful for your battery. I love this because it actually gives me the gauge and it charges the cells individually. So it lets me know where each one is. So I can go ahead, pull it out. And then like it is say, oh, hey, the third, sixth and seventh ones are done. I'll pull out the third, sixth and seventh, add new ones in while the others continue to charge. So this is, I'll put this in the show notes as well because this is super, super helpful. Love this thing. Now, I use, we use as far as straps and bags, we use uh, Hold Fast Money Maker. We love the owner, the guy is incredible. Uh, we, we got these right when he first started his business and he's been incredible with us throughout the whole entire process. Um, we really like him. Uh, and so if you guys want, these are the straps that we use. We use the Hold Fast Money Maker straps uh, and they're really cool because they get that weight off of my back. Um, so you can see, I kind of rock this like this. It kind of, it gets me the it gets me both cameras along the back. And then what I also do here, these are little tiny tricks of the trades, is this right here is a little lens cleaner. Bam! So I have this little lens cleaner tucked in right here. So whenever I don't need it, I tuck it back up in there. Uh, and you know I like to keep it for America, right? America. So um, I have that in there. Cleans my lens in a pinch. Really, really nice. Uh, I just strap it to there. I also have the um, the Hold Fast Money Maker bag. Uh, I love this bag. It is the uh, Hold Fast Sightseer bag. Uh, people are like, oh, but it's behind you, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I love the fact that it's behind me. It's not getting in my way. Uh, I really do. I've gotten used, so used to this pulling bag. I know what my lenses feel like. I know what my stuff feels like. I literally just pull back in there, pull out my lenses. Really, really helpful. And then like once you break it in, it just feels really natural. So I love this bag. Catherine uses the Hold Fast Money Maker system as well. She's got this sick She's got this sick like red leather, which I'm super jealous of, but she's got a really cool red leather one with little black accessories that's really awesome. And I think she uses, so she uses the Ona. She used to, it used to be the Brooklyn bag that she had. Now this is the smaller version of the Brooklyn bag. I have no idea what it's called, but it's an Ona bag, O-N-A. Uh, they're really nice, really quality bags as well. Uh, one of the one of the things I love to do is when we ingest is I love to ingest into this Lexar four bay um, I don't know the specific name I'll put it down in the links but it's like a Lexar four bay ingester and the great thing about that is these are interchangeable so let's say you shoot Nikon and Canon we did that for a while we shot Nikon Canon Fuji like all three of them I'm not even joking oh I forgot to tell you about my Fuji XT ones and the XT two uh, okay going back. This is the Fuji X-T2. Love this, <laughs> that was my rewind sequence. Uh, love this, love this camera. It's small, it's easy, it's got a nice flip out screen. What I really love about this camera is it's silent. 
So like I literally will go and I will be uh, like shooting right over the pastor or the priest or whoever, shooting right over his shoulder like this and they'll have no idea I'm there. And I'll get cool shots like this. Awesome. So, um, which makes this one really, really handy because it's completely silent shutter and the quality is just as comparable to a, um, to like my D750. I mean, amazing quality. The dynamic range is not as good. Also, um, because it's mirrorless, the depth of field is not as good uh, either, but I have the 23 1.4, I believe this is. Do, 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 it don't tell me. Ah, nah, 23 2.0. One, the reason why I got the 2.0 instead of the 1.4 is because it's faster and I think it's a little bit sharper. So the 23 2.0 for the Fuji is really, really nice. I also have this on our Fuji X-T1, which I don't use as much at weddings. I do like the X-T2 because I use it at weddings and I also vlog with it because it's got like continual focus, all those things, it's great. So normally my vlogging camera, and then I also have the X-T1 with the Fuji uh, 35, I believe this is, it's the Fujinon. Fujinon 35 1.4. Now, remember that because these are mirrorless, they're crop censored, so that means that the 35 is the equivalent of the 50, 23 is the equivalent of the 35. So um, that's why we got those uh, those depths or those uh, focal lengths with these uh, with these cameras. But love these cameras, they're amazing. I, I honestly think that Fuji, like I think mirrorless in general, is the future of cameras just because they're so light and the quality is like comparable to, to these full huge cameras, these huge DSLR cameras and so I know Sony is making some sick cameras that are mirrorless full frame they're just insane so um, I would suggest looking into those if you haven't looked into uh, what you want to upgrade to yet uh, okay now I just going back uh, fast forward to this uh, I do love this because it has different bays for specific memory cards types. So if you use an SD card, great. If you use an XF card, because maybe you shoot like a Nikon D5 or you shoot the D850 that has XF cards, I believe, you can put that in here. Or if you have CF cards, because you shoot Canon, you could put that in here too. So they're interchangeable, they're awesome, and it allows me to simultaneously ingest four memory cards at once while still keeping a high uh, write rate, which is just the rate at which it's writing on the hard drive. So uh, it's just a really, really great addition uh, this one is like a Thunderbird one Thunderbird Thunderbolt Thunderbolt one as well as a USB 3.0 which I think is plenty fast so make sure you get the USB 3.0 version uh, it's much faster than the 2.0 version also we use the rugged it's just not rugged it's rugged I don't know the Macy Lacey La not Macy Macy she's a pretty girl Lacey uh, rugged two, four terabytes, I don't know how much this is, but this is like our travel one. So whenever we travel for destination weddings, I make sure I have them backed up on here. Oh, speaking of traveling, awesome. I gotta show you guys something else that we have. So when we travel, we make sure we have our memory cards backed up on here. I back up our vlogs on here, but then we also, when we travel, I have this Western Digital. This, I look forever for something like this. So hopefully this helps you guys. This is the West, Western Digital My Passport Wireless Pro. This thing is amazing, amazing, amazing because as soon as we finish weddings that we travel, I will take those memory cards that I'm done ingesting onto my computer and I'll stick them right here in the slot here and it immediately will begin ingesting those memory cards onto this hard drive so now I have those files on my uh, hypothetically I should have those files if we're traveling on my uh, laptop then onto this lacy drive and onto this which is really awesome and because it's online it's a my it's a wireless pro I can access these files from my phone from another computer anything like that so it's a really 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 great resource to have when traveling uh, and shooting weddings so I highly suggest this now I think it does only take SD cards so if you shoot Canon sorry um, you could uh, plug in your USB ports into this as well so and use it so you probably could plug a, a, a card reader you probably could plug your card reader into this hypothetically and it would start ingesting into this so you could do that as well now when it comes to Big Daddy um, Big Daddy file management uh, this hunk of metal over here shoot dang well, let's just hope it still works. So um, we've got this, this is the Drobo. This is, um, you wanna take a look at this? This is five, four terabyte hard drive. So we've got about 20 terabytes worth of 
storage in this bad boy and it's a RAID system. So what that means is that it's reading on to these other ones. So I, it shows up as one folder onto my computer. As soon as I put it in here, what it's gonna do is it's going to back up uh, it's gonna back up backups onto these other drives. So if one of my drives were to fail, that's okay um, because technology like sucks sometimes and stuff happens and, and hard drives fail, but it's okay because all of those memories that whatever I'm capturing for somebody else or all those files are being stored somewhere else, which is super, super important. Now, let's go another step for your file management. We use Backblaze. Yeah, we use Backblaze. We used to use CrashPlan. Don't use CrashPlan anymore because they are based, their speed is based off of like a open source speed. So like, it sucks. We have, we have giga internet and it's uploading at like four megabytes a second. I'm like, bruh, we need to upgrade that. So then we, we switched over to Backblaze and it, I upgrade, I uploaded seven terabytes in a week, I think. So super fast, upload all that to the cloud. And what I really love about it is no matter where I am in the world, I can get out my laptop and access those files and download those files onto my laptop, which is really, really cool. So I always have uh, access to it. Auxiliary pieces, let's see. Uh, of course we have Macs. So I have a 27 inch Mac iMac. Uh, I also have a 21 inch iMac. We also have a 15 inch MacBook Pro. So we use those. Uh, one thing I also like is like, when you see sometimes we have a little bit of crazy shots, I'll have this prism. You can see my prism is all jacked up. Be cutting up people's fingers with this thing, reaching in my bag and grabbing it. Um, so, but the prism is great to shoot through, to do crazy things through um, and to get new new shots. I also have a broken Nikkor, Nikon 50 millimeter 1.8. Uh, it's a Nikkor 50 millimeter 1.8, probably cost like a hundred bucks. Broke it so that you can free lens with it. Let's say you're traveling for like weddings and destination weddings and stuff like that. And you don't want to travel uh, heavy tripods. Boom. Why don't you just strap, bungee cord one of your flashes to a tree? I've done it. Bungee cord one of your flashes to like a, a pole in a reception area. I've done it. So like these are, bungee cords are really, really great to have for something like that. And then one of the last things we have are microfi microfibers for, uh, I use them to clean my glasses because my glasses always getting dirty. Uh, but you can also use them to clean your lenses if you'd like. So we like those micro microfibers. So one thing that we do, especially like, we love having light stands at reception because they're, they're you know, like, they, they put the light on the dance floor and all that good stuff. And so when we travel, we're a little more limited. But when we're here, we use what we call cheetah stands. Uh, cheetah stands are amazing light stands. Now, really, really hard to find, so good luck getting one. But actually, they're not hard to find. They're just always on back order. So if you go to cheetah, cheetah lights, cheetah stands, I don't know what their website is. Cheetah something, I'll put it in the uh, show notes. Uh, cheetah, 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 something. But what I love about this is like normally, so like let's say you're at a reception and you're like, oh dang, I need to be over there. And you gotta take your lights in and you're like, doop, 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 and they're trying to run with it. Or you try to pick it up as it is and you're like hitting people on the way. You're like, oh, sorry, bloop, bloop, bloop. And then you get over to the spot. What I love about the cheetah stands is uh, as soon as you put them down, then they kind of retract out. Uh, and then as soon as you pick them up, then they kind of come back up. And so I love them because of that. So it makes it super easy. So if something happens across the dance floor, you just go run, pick up your light stand and it's and it's standing tall like this and you're just running with it across the, uh, the dance floor or wherever you're going with it. So they're really, really awesome light stands, but well, we can't travel with these. These are huge light stands. And so what we do when we travel is we bring these light stands. These are the, uh, Oh shoot, okay, watch your face. All right, all right. So uh, these are the ProMaster LST travel stands. Make sure that you guys grab these because now they're smaller, they're six foot stands, which I hate, but they're still light stands nonetheless and you need them sometimes. And they really, they pack up, they fit in your carry-on, not your carry-on, your checked bag, which is really awesome. And then you just put them right back and try not to hit yourself in the face when you do it. Boom, just like that. So really simple, really easy, careful. Uh, boom. So really great light stands for that. Uh, and then if you don't, dang, just be careful with these things. And I think that's all. Uh, if you, if I missed anything, let me know. I'll make sure that I let you know what we use for whatever that is. We use Lightroom, we use Dropbox, we use all those normal things. We have a IMAX. I think I already said all that stuff. Um, but if you have any other questions of gear that we use, just let us know. Um, but super excited. I hope you guys enjoyed this exhaustive 
list of what we use and why we use them and why we don't use other types of gear uh, because you don't need too much fluff you don't need too much stuff and i think what also happens guys is we get so caught up in what somebody else has that we want the big item we want those 600 xrts because they have a high price tag you don't need that there's certain things that you just don't need uh, and just because somebody else has it doesn't mean you have to have it run your business how you run your business find what you love and just use that um thankful for you guys i hope you enjoyed it if you liked it smash that subscribe button it might be over here Hit that button, smash the like button, share this because I think some other people, um, you know, need to hear about certain gear that, that they could use and stuff like that. So hopefully this is helpful for you. Thanks so much, you guys. I hope you have a great day, great week, all those things above.